Welcome back to Pick Your Potion. Let's do that. Welcome back to Pick Your Potion. I'm Ophira. I'm Ashra. And today it is really dangerously close to the summer solstice when we're yes. filming this. Yes, it is because the summertime is busy and that's fun for yeah. everyone. We've, so um, we've both just kind of been living life and then we were like, wait a minute, we really need to film an episode like today. Yeah. So <laughs> here we are. And today we are drinking tea. It's high calf tea with more caffeine than coffee, but it doesn't make you want to yourself yeah throw <laughs> up or whatever whatever you start get. violently shaking yeah yeah <laughs> but we're doing that because um we've been manifesting things and i ha get to go be a professional person after this so, and um not Which, congratulations by thank the way. you yes so we'll get into that yes asher has been promoted and she is going to work after this so she can't be drunk i can't be drunk <laughs> so uh, <laughs> By promoted, uh, just not bartending, but we'll get into it. Yeah, but. so we actually forgot to do the cat update last time. I'm realizing we announced it in the beginning of the episode and then didn't talk about cats. We but did not. Nothing terribly interesting was happening with cats at the time, but now it has. So, Ashra, take it away and tell take us it the away. story of the vanishing cat. Okay, y'all might remember uh, Doomhammer. Um, you'll see him at the next episode. We'll put a God willing. there. Yeah. Um, anyways, so uh, he decided to go into another dimension. Uh, at least that is the only reasonable explanation I have for the series of events. So I, w I wake, and my cat's very needy. He's usually all over me. And I start calling for him, and he usually comes when he calls because he's my cat. And I, I can't find him. It ripped my apartment apart. My apartment is not that large. I call my boyfriend, I call my mom, and I'm like, I can't find him. And they're both like, he's probably hiding. My boyfriend offers to leave work. I was like, ah, you don't need to do that yet. Let me have, my mom's already on her way over. My mom rips apart said apartment, concurs there is no cat in the apartment. Romano, my, my boyfriend, he comes home. He, uh, after I have to go to work, because of course my cat goes missing, um, on the worst time possible. when I am working for 12 hour days like two days straight of course that's when I can't call off good timing um, good timing so uh my mother we go to the shelters we're looking all over he comes home with his best friend and they rip the apartment apart they cannot find the cat so he spent two days putting up uh, flyers in the neighborhood so we're getting calls people are looking I'm at work trying to keep it together it was not going well and he while flyering comes back to the apartment opens the door and is going upstairs to live on a third floor and there's doom in the back hallway he was hungry hadn't meowed he just looked guilty oh but we had torn apart everywhere in that apartment we had gone through all crawl spaces. We went into the basement. Anywhere he could have gone through, there were spider webs there and intact. Like there would have been evidence. He was clean, he was just hungry. So I'm pretty sure he went into another dimension. But <laughs> oh I, I was not expecting a happy ending to that story. And Thank it was, goodness, like cheers yeah. to him being okay. Oh yeah. But also cheers to him having an adventure in another dimension. He's never done that before. I've had him legitimately since he was born. I was there, it was so gross. So. <laughs> That is wild, dude. It was wild, but it was the best text message I ever received at work when I'm thinking, oh my God, my cat is dead. Probably he ran away and he hates me. That, no, that was not the case. He was just. He was just having his little party in another dimension. He totally was. <laughs> so that's the doomed update. He's home. And Yay. yeah. Hopefully he uh, doesn't terribly miss the, like, wife and kids that he has in that other dimension. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, he's got his little goblin sister, and soon I'll have another cat living in my house, too. Oh. So, yeah, Princess Gary's coming. That's right. Yes. That's right. So, yes, in manifestation, my partner's moving in. I have upgraded my job, and now I'm doing therapy at two offices. And cheers I get to go to decorate. That. So that's my life update. That's a lot of things to cheers about. It has a lot to cheers about. Um, and you take it away and then we'll go through the, our cards and stuff. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, so my life is really interesting right now, even though it doesn't look like it is. <laughs> so I think I was telling you the other day over lunch, like, 
every time that I meet up with a friend in the past several weeks, they're like, so like, what's new with you? How's life? What's different? There, Cause there's always something different mm -hmm. going on in my life. And I'm like, interestingly enough, nothing measurable. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like I don't have any measurable updates. Like I've been in this apartment for a while. I've, you know, been doing better in my business for a while. I've been single for a while. I've been doing self-development, all of that. But nothing looks different. But on the inside, I feel completely different. Like I've just gone through so many like spiritual awakenings and like mindset shifts and have just like met interesting people and had interesting conversations and all of that kind of stuff. But for our life updates, as always, we like to you know, pull some cards or some runes that kind of represent the energies of the past season. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I feel like the whole kind of thing that I'm going through right now is the judgment card, which essentially is where you are going through some kind of awakening where you're realizing that like the universe is calling you to do something. Maybe it's something yeah. that you've been putting off for a long time, or maybe it's something that you've kind of always felt connected to, but you weren't really sure what to do with it. But one day the universe is like, hey, you have to do this, not tomorrow, not next week, but you have to do it now. <laughs> like, <laughs> You gotta do it right now and it's like oh my god this is big and scary I don't know if I can do this I don't know if I'm worthy of this quest yeah and the universe is like nah dude you've been like everything that you've gone through and your whole life has been leading up to this moment now is the time you've got to freaking do it so for me this is kind of like putting myself out there in new ways and talking about new things on my channel and with my clients and just also like becoming an artist again like I spent yeah. so much time being like a self-development mentor and all of that that I almost forgot that I'm an artist so oh. I was like I need to like be weird again <laughs> you know like, yeah so there's that and then that kind of snowballs into um essentially the hierophant for me is kind of about like this represents the part of you that communicates with your higher self and then these dudes down here are like your everyday life so i have essentially been i've just been this living oracle to myself for the past several weeks which like as everyone probably knows i use my pendulum for everything but i've been a lot more intentional recently about like knowing exactly what my actual intentions for my outcome are mm -hmm. and then using the pendulum to kind of navigate me to that. Whereas before I would just be like, is this a good idea? Yes or no? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's more intention behind it. So I've just been really, really intuitive lately. So I also pulled the five of pentacles, which used to trigger me really hard when I was younger. Like when I was a starving artist and I would pull this card all the time, I'd be like, I know I'm a starving artist universe. Stop telling me. I get it. Yes. Like, give me a solution. But the actual point of this card is showing you that like you're taking the hard way, but there's actually a solution nearby that maybe you've conditioned yourself to believe isn't an option for you for some reason. And, you know, back in the day, there were very like, complex reasons for that whereas now it was actually really simple like I was going through kind of a financial crisis this past month because one of my top paying clients was having financial issues herself and wasn't able to pay me on time and in the past that would have freaked me out I would have been like the universe is punish me punishing me it's telling me I've done something wrong blah 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 but really it was I was able to see it was a blessing in disguise because it's yeah. like thank goodness this is happening now to show me that I need to like change my business model so I'm not just relying on a couple of high paying clients and I have more sources of income. Mm -hmm. So um, this cut card kind of showed up to remind me like the, maybe the solutions that you thought were cut off to you are actually things that are super available. And I had conditioned myself to believe that this card meant that it was going to be hard to find those solutions because that's how it used to be for me. Whereas now it was like, oh, you're an artist. You have access to like a million different things that you could be selling or creating or offering. Um, the business model that you're using may or may not be serving you anymore. Maybe you need to add some more like coaching packages that are more accessible to different people with different needs. And I kind of was like, oh, okay, now this card is my friend instead of my enemy. So nice. kind of all of these things have been mushed together for me. Very nice. Just like really listening to my intuition instead of like going off of the belief systems that I took on in my, you know, last chapter. So very nice. 
Well, sweet. What's coming up for you? Um, a couple different things. I was trying to figure out which order I want to go in. Um, so I think I'm going to start with, I pulled this one in my tarot reading in my, um, I do a tarot reading on the full moon and a rune reading on the new moon. We just did the full moon. So this one's on my brain. Um, and I'm choosing the lovers. Um, and at first glance, it is very much about relationships with each other. And I have manifested a healthy relationship and yay, yay fun times. <laughs> We're about to be living together. What? Um, but more importantly than that, it's about your relationship with your higher self as well. Mm -hmm. And where, when I was reading about this card, because I am still new to tarot, and it's sort of a flip side of my last one when I just pulled the tower and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> but this has all been playing into the same thing. Things There has been a lot of structural changes in my life. My career is shifting. How I, my, how I spend my time must shift. And the lovers is about your choice and following that, um, following the path and choosing what's right with your higher self, being true to yourself. Um, wherein the fool there, it's like, you can make a choice and any choice is going to be cool. It's like this one there's like, there is a right choice. Yeah. Um, and how it resolved was in my reading was how the situation resolved, uh, our old podcast was Queen of Cups, and I didn't pull this one. I was shuffling, and it fell out, and that's how I was like, oh, that's I was like, one. I was like, oh, well, let me use my intuition. And of course, this one's all about use your intuition. You know what the choices that you need to make are, all of that, and uh, the one that's just been speaking to me today is the Three of Cups. And then prior to filming, I couldn't remember what this one was called for whatever reason. When there's clearly three cups um <laughs> but i hadn't had had any caffeine yet but this one it's a celebratory it's good things coming to fruition and it's friendships and um working together to have this sweet cup dance cheers so yeah cup dances <laughs> yay to cup dances dude. okay yeah I feel like those all tie together. You basically picked all like heart chakra. Yeah, it's been crazy. Things. And that's been what my career shift is because uh, if you don't know, I am a couples counselor. So I've been focusing a ton of energy on creating a caseload that can sustain me um, financially, emotionally. I don't want to layer up just a million people and not give them adequate care. I want the amount that is comfortable for me emotionally, that will support me financially and make me the therapist I need to be. Mm -hmm. So I'm not reliant on bartending. Yeah. Which has been a very big part of my life. So that's been what a lot of my shifts have been. So we've been talking a lot about manifesting. Uh, we've been doing a lot. Of we've that. been <laughs> doing so much manifesting. And we were, we were having a conversation earlier about how we manifest things. So we are different in our approaches on manifesting in As some way with everything, with everything. <laughs> we have similar outlooks but how we go about it is differently but I've been blathering for a while so I'll let you take it away on what what is it that you do because you do I do all kinds of you things. do all kinds of things I, um, okay. like I I tend to think of myself kind of as a divination witch first and foremost in fact, for, for many years, I would actually tell people, they'd be like, what kind of spells do you do? And I'm like, I actually don't do a lot of spells. Um, in my 20s, I generally did a spell, like, at the very most, like, once every season, mm -hmm. um, like a big spell. But I would mainly focus on receiving intuition and, like, kind of just, again, just like, oh, hey, Pendulum, like, what do I do? You know? Yeah. like. Um, and kind of making decisions that way. And I kind of would think of like the spell is basically just the path that I'm on. Like I'm on a spell mm -hmm. for a better life, you know, but in 2019, everything has changed. Um, <laughs> I'm actually doing a lot more spell work now because I'm a lot more clear on what I want. Yeah. Interestingly enough. So like back in my twenties, I would do a ritual when I desperately needed a change or like wanted a big change to happen. Like I needed mm -hmm. a new place to live or like I needed a new relationship or a new career opportunity, like something big. 
Whereas now I'm just like, why not just get clear on the little steps towards my big goals and cast mm-hmm. spells for those? Cause they're a lot more easily manageable. <laughs> like, yes. So this past year I've kind of fallen into a habit of working with the moon, kind of like you were saying, like you do a certain thing on the new moon, certain thing on the full moon. So um, I've been guided by my intuition to do like an official spell casting every new moon. Nice. And then just like do like a deep dive of um, intuitive work and, and divination around the full moon just to kind of see where I'm at and see if I need to change direction or like take any additional steps or anything like that. Um, and I feel like that's easily manageable because it's two dates of the month to check in and everything mm-hmm. else is just, you know, following your intuition. Yeah. Um, so are you asking, like, specifically what kind of rituals? and? If you want to go there, yeah. Because sure. some, some people want to go there and some people don't. So if you want to reach out to us and tell us how you do your spells, then we want to hear. So. We do. We do. Right. Maybe we'll have some things in common. Um, yeah. We'll see. Um, yeah, I can, I can mention a few. So, like, for example, one thing that is super duper easy to do is just to, like, write down what you want. It, like, it's really? so simple. <laughs> and most people yeah. actually kind of overlook that. Or, like, some people will write it down in a sentence. Like, oh, I would have moved to California and have, like, this kind of apartment. But I've recently gotten into this thing called scripting which is essentially where you get into like creative writing mode as if you were writing a novel and you wanted Mm -hmm. to make it super juicy and interesting. And you basically write from the perspective of that ideal future version of yourself, like what your life looks like and how it smells and tastes and feels and like all of the, the little details of that. And I actually grew up writing fiction but I could never come up with a conclusion for my story, so I kind of stopped doing it. But it's like been an amazing outlet to kind of bring that into my magic. So some days I'll literally just wake up and just start writing about my ideal future, just really getting into the zone. Um, And then the next step of that is always to take some kind of inspired action. So like some idea will pop into my head of like, here's a little thing I can do today that will move me towards that. And then I'll just like ask my pendulum, like, is this the right thing to do? Or should I do this other thing? And it'll kind of point me in the direction Mm -hmm. of some little action step to take. And that's kind of, that's what I've been doing a lot of lately. Okay, cool. What about you? Okay, so I like to do what I call crackpot spells, where I set my intention. Um, And I tend to do this on the waxing moon. Oh, that's Um, a good idea. So it can sit there and crockpot while the moon is waxing. Yeah, so I do a little ritual pretty much every day, unless I don't have time. Um, Recently, it has been carving sigils, uh, runes, on to a candle, and... I'll use an herb, usually cinnamon, because I've been doing a lot of, like, money financial work. I'll, like, rub it into it. Um, and I'll write some intentions along with runes on a bay leaf or two, depending on how much stuff I need to get done. I've been very much focused focused on my career, though. And so it's been, it had a lot to do with that. And I'll burn the bay leaf and let the candle burn down. Now, I don't feel... Like, I like to be there and let the candle burn all the way down in one fell swoop, but I'm not going to leave a candle if I have to go to work. And yeah, be... don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So, before any landlords and just reasonable human beings uh, read that and are like, oh, she just leaves open flames. I do not leave open flames in my apartment, unless I'm being really scatterbrained. But I haven't done that in a while. Um, and what I'm going to do, I've gone past the full moon with this one because it's about to be the summer solstice, so I want the zenith of the sun energy. Uh, I'm going to take all the burned bay leaf ash and I'm going to put them in my garden. So oh, good idea. That, that way it grows. And then on full moons, I tend to do a lot of purging. Um, and so I am, I'll clean my apartment, try and do it counterclockwise. Oh my God, uh, that is so I, I'm extra. Trying to, I'm very extra <laughs> about it. Try and do it counterclockwise, not like completely, but just like with my that intention room by room. And then do a little witch's salt just to banish, banish, banish bad things. Um, and go through my closet, get all the actual physical nonsense that I don't need. So that way, when it's, it's not as intensive on the waning moon, unless I'm really trying to get like some of my life Mm -hmm. um but when i'm trying to manifest that's what i do and so giving myself a break so that way i have the energy to on the new moon again be like bay leaf time let's do this 
I love that whole, like, you work in a cyclical pattern, yeah. <laughs> like, in multiple ways. Yes, definitely. So, and that's how I just check in with myself. But I like to do on uh, the waxy moon, easy little spell every day, and then waning moon, give myself an energetic break. Um, think about what it is that I want to manifest, journal, 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 you know. But I, I think I'm going to try and take a page out of your book and start doing the ideal life thing because dude it is crazy yeah. like what can happen like I actually one of the girls in my mastermind group read a post about like I was talking about how I do scripting and she was like having a huge blockage with something like I think she was having a hard time getting clients or something like mm -hmm. that and she just like did scripting and like wrote down this amount of money that was going to come in I think it was like five thousand dollars and then a, literally like a, a notification came in that someone bought a five thousand dollar package from her what? she was just like oh my god and I was like this is amazing how come it doesn't work that fast for me but um, <laughs> I think and that's something you might be able to speak to too is like what is your experience with the speed of your manifestations because like for me and I'm trying to say this in the past tense because it's like I'm yeah. putting this behind me. Yeah. Um, but I have tended to experience slow manifestation most of the time. Yeah. Um, and I know that that's because the things that I was trying to manifest had a lot of shadow work that needed to be done and a lot of like emotional clearing and a lot of just mm -hmm. mental conditioning that needed to be worked through which is important. Like, I'm so glad I did the work for that. But on the downside, it's like, I'm, I've never usually been that person that can just snap their fingers and have it instantly. Not usually. Sometimes, yeah. but not usually. I mean, I want to say it's fast and it's slow. Um, because what when I started this change, it was back around Samhain of last year. Mm -hmm. And it, when I was like, this is... I decided to banish toxicity from my life and to focus on myself. So it's been a ton of personal change, but if I, it feels like it's been, I've been, it felt like through the winter and early part of the spring that I was slogging, slogging, slogging and just trying to make things work. But once, if in, in the grand scheme of things, that's less than a year yeah. that it's, it just felt very standstill. Um, but now that I've started working more with intention, doing a lot more ritual and just focusing my energy and not, it, it took a lot of boundary setting with me personally too, wherein I, I had a mindset shift where I don't live to work because um, I would work just, I had two days off in the entire month of March. Like I, and it's like, we're not doing that anymore. I stopped doing that. You do not work on Sundays or Mondays unless you're about to take a vacation. Then you can work on a Sunday and a Monday. But other than that, you do not work on Sundays and Mondays. And boundaries are so important. And when once I started respecting that and saying no, I if somebody's asking me, can I do something that day of, and it would force me to cancel plans with friends or a loved one or my family, then no, then I just I'm not doing it. And once I started doing that and focusing my energy on creating an office space that I want, getting professional clothes, looking like an adult, not dressing like a nine-year-old at day camp, yeah. then it, it, everything sort of started to move quicker. Yeah. Um, like doing the actual earth element, tangible, like physical yes. changes that will put you in that energy. Just for the job you want, not the job you have. Like that yeah. it actually works. Um, and it just making myself a priority um and now it's finding out how to reach out to mentors um my family my partner and how i don't have to just do it alone like that's a big part is that three of cups yo three of cups <laughs> yeah totally three of cups um i have mentors in my life that have helped me a lot and have they've seen the energy that i invest into what i'm all my goals and they've invested back into me. Um, and in partnership, in friendship, being able to share the load of household burdens helps. Because then I have got the freedom to take gambles with my money and focus all on my professional goals. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. It does. I really resonated with what you said about like 
in the moment, it can feel like you're slugging along slowly <laughs> and doing a lot of shadow work and not like casting a lot of forward moving spells or, you know, taking a lot of forward moving action. But then you look back on it and you're like, wait a second, that was just a few months. <laughs> and then you're like, but, and then you look back over a year and you're like, I have changed so much in the past year. I, I journal pretty frequently. I try and journal most every day, but I've fallen off of that just when life gets busy. But rereading your, if you're a journaler, um, or if you haven't journaled, I highly recommend it. 100% guys, you get yourself a journal. Read, reading where you were a month ago, weeks ago, even days, was just ago. days ago, <laughs> it was like, this is my concern. And then you can actually see your own growth. Oh and my gosh. Yes. Just, yeah. Um, and I've been journaling since I was a child. So same. Just yeah. that. Yeah. Like I would have to say a journal was my very first magical tool and remains to be my most consistent one. Yes, definitely. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. I can totally like get behind that because Oh my God. Like even just thinking about a few weeks ago, like mentally, I'm not the same person. Yeah. And I think that's a really important thing that like everybody listening to, like, I, I feel like your homework should all be like, just look at your, the way your life was a month ago, right? Like we're mm -hmm. on the solst we're on the summer solstice, maybe even look back to six months ago at the winter solstice. What has changed in your life? What's improved? Like, Oh yeah. What, you know, give yourself credit because I think that's powerful magic in and of itself. Like the gratitude of realizing that you are a powerful manifester by looking back and giving yourself credit for what you've manifested. Then you get this jolt of energy and you're like, Oh, well now I can do even more. And yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, cheers to us. Yeah. Cheers to us. Cheers to the summer solstice. Cheers to everything. And to cats. Cheers to cats. Cheers to you guys. Yeah. We're celebrating in spirit, whatever you are manifesting. Cause I know that, I mean, energetically people are going through so many shifts right now. So whatever your shift is, we I hope you. it's cool. I hope you just vibe with your shift. 100%. Uh, yeah. Don't fight the shift. I'm saying that for myself as well. I'm <laughs> saying it to you, but also to me. So I'm saying that to me too. Cheers okay. to that. Cheers to that. And we'll see you on Lamas. Bye. Bless Bye. me.